this video, we're going to talk about data models. So a, a model in general is some simplified representation of something. So in fact, like, like maybe we talk about, you know, uh, in the brain sort of having a model of the environment that we live in. Um, and so specifically, we're going to be talking about something simpler than that, a, a data model. So we will have pieces of pieces of data uh, information about some system we're interested in, uh, you know, a store or something like that, a university. And then uh, we're going to talk about sort of how we are bringing that information together and, and keeping it uh, related to each other. And we're not going to be interested in in this in this video in a particular rep a particular representation of a particular situation, but just more generally, how historically have we organized data? Um, we're going to be talking about sort of move, getting, we're back doing sort of a history back in the 70s and 80s, sort of leading up to relational databases. And we may mention in passing sort of other things that have come since relational databases, but our focus will be on sort of uh, our focus is overall on relational databases. And so we're doing the history of sort of what led up to them and sort of in terms of data models. So in this history, in some sense, reflects the, uh, the, the level of programming that one uh, has. And so the original sort of what one was doing was writing programs and manipulated files. And so that was very prescriptive. You needed to know all the details of the file and how they were, where they were, and how they were parsed. And then, as the as they developed the idea of a database management system, we it uh, like the the, the nitty gritty details were taken sort of away and handled by that system, so that the person working with the database uh, could focus on like work at a higher level. Okay, we're also going to talk, and and it was the, as as historically as people moved from through data models uh, of different types that allowed us to move sort of more and more to have better models with better uh, data be, data features and uh, and move towards this more sort of descriptive approach. So we'll talk about the hierarchical models and the network models, and then we'll move into sort of the the relational model, and we'll you know mention some other models along the way. Okay, so one of the early sort of not just pure everybody writing their own file based uh, system, but sort of bringing all the ideas together and trying to be sort of do something that uh, like other, you know, not make your own, but have a, some, a product that, that did this for people. Um, one of the earliest data models was this, this hierarchical model. And so we'll say that it is hierarchical or tree-like. So then um, you have relationships, you have all these little units of data and, uh, then the relationships in a hierarchical model are all of the sort of parent-child type. So this is, and this is like one parent, so I'll say, you know, it's asexual reproduction. There's, you know, a child has one parent in, in, in this scheme. Okay. And, and if you want a sense of what a hierarchical, uh, data model looks like, you can think of a, a file system on a computer. So then you have uh, your files, this, these little containers of your data um, are in folders and those folders may be in folders and those folders may be on drives and maybe you'd rather be called a directory than a folder, but it's the same, same idea. Um, and so here's sort of a tree-like structure of uh, a computer. So you might have uh, overall the computer, and then you might have various drives, a C drive, a D drive, an A drive, an E drive. 
And then you might have a folder on the C drive. Um, and then you might have subfolders. And then in one of those folders, you might have other subfolders. And then finally, you might have somewhere some files. So, but uh, everything has, you know, every file, you know, ultimately there's a file. The file belongs to one folder. That folder may be a subfolder of some other folder, but it's a subfolder of only one thing. So that's what we're saying by the, the parent-child relationship. The the parent of the file is its folder. The parent of a folder is that it's the folder that it's a subfolder of and so on. And so you can uh, sort of just represent it uh, graphically, and it is what we call a tree, and there are no loops. There's only sort of one way to reach uh, each thing. So if you're calling them the, the leaves, there's only one uh, path of branches to get to that leaf. Okay. And and let's just talk about instead of uh, let's use this exact continue with this example of sort of a, a of the file system, and now say uh, my uh, file system uh, I have files in in my system so that you know thinking of them as some kind of some data, but it may have. Um, more than one if i'm if my folders are organized as say courses csc240 might be a course but then i might also have another folder to represent like the files i put on the web and then there might be a file that belongs to my 240 course but it's on the web so should i put it in 240 or should i put it in the web and so that is one of the sort of shortcomings of a hierarchical model of you know if you think of things uh the the, the having only a parent child relationship is limiting um and then the way you might uh get around that is to have copies i might have a copy of a file that is for the csc 240 course in one place and then another copy uh, of it in for my for my web page, but now I have two copies, and if I change one, I'm not changing the other. And in database, this is a the problem is uh, data redundancy that we have we have dealt with the multiple relationships by having the data appear twice, and then that can produce what we call an update anomaly. We fix if we change. One piece of data, data. I edit one file. It is not edited everywhere. And then another thing, it's not necessarily a problem, but it's something one must do in these systems, is you've got to get used to the idea of drilling down. So, you know, to find the piece of data, to find the file on my computer, you have to sort of work your way down through all the folders and the subfolders to you finally get to the actual piece of data. So that's what these hierarchical models that were uh, preceded relational databases were like. Um, so if you're familiar with your file system of your computer, then they were organized uh, similarly with instead of pieces of data in place of, well, of where I'm talking about files. Um, now, one's uh, file system is, in some sense, becoming more database-like. Um, so you can, uh, they have said, said there are useful features to a database that, a, that, the, that an old-fashioned file system doesn't have. And so they've started to um, bring in database features, one feature of a database is um, like like metadata. Um, so you can add uh, meta tags to files to sort of add additional information, information. So it's not the information necessarily that we think of contained precisely in the file, but it's data about the, the file. Um, you can index files. So like a database has certain fields that you say, 
um, like the primary keys, but also other fields where you say they're going to be indexed. I expect to search on them. And you can do similar things with uh, your operating, with your file system in your operating system that you might say, I expect uh, to, 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 search, to search this folder and I would like it to be indexed. In fact, there was a file system in which it was going to be totally, sort of completely a database, and then it, it sort of never came to fruition, but it was uh, in the works for the longest time. So it was, uh, they didn't, they just brought in some of the ideas and not the full database idea. The next sort of model along the way was a network model. And so, um, again, we're still in the sort of 70s, and this was the the uh, Codicil group. And uh, the example of such a group was IDS. And so now we're sort of dealing with this idea that, uh, you know, in my file example, I had a file that I could think of as, as belonging to two different ways of organizing my system of it might be in my 240 folder and it might be in my web page folder and the network model sort of allowed that that there were sort of multiple paths to the same piece of data so so it wasn't so it wasn't just a a a child had a single parent and mapped back it was um and so just uh and this is the sort of uh if we want to for you to think of a system like this then it's the sort of the world wide web that um you can have hyperlinks so you can have files but the files can have hyperlinks and you can have hyperlinks uh to the same file from different places so so those relationships are sort of realized in the hyperlinks and uh, are less restricted than the pure uh, network hierarchical model. So, sorry. So, so the network model allows these multiple things. So I have some uh, file giving directions on how to make uh, plotting and uh, if any course I have that uh, uses that can link to the same set of directions. So there are sort of multiple ways of getting to the to the data. And so then if you map this out, then you have a network, you are allowing loops this time. And then if you have enough of these uh, links going every which way, then people refer to it like a web, like the World Wide Web. Um, then in, in the history of databases, along came Cod with uh, his rules and some of the problem with uh, these other models was um, the problem, especially with the with the hierarchical model, was the, the problem of redundancy. You either, if you wanted to make all the relationships you wanted to make, then you ended up with duplicated data, and that uh, produced the problem of redundancy. So like you had the data repeated, you have a customer made an order, and then a customer made another order, a customer made another order. Do, are we uh, taking all this standard uh, information of the data, the name and the credit card number and what have you, and repeating that over and over again? Um, and so, and that causes problems of, you know, takes up more space, but also, which was important in the 70s, but also it has uh, the updating problem of if you change that piece of information, do you need it to be changed everywhere? Um, and then there's some models, some more current models that just say like, I don't care. Um, you know, I'm interested in, I'm only interested in that one order. So I only, you know, if I had a different address for a different, for a previous order, so be it. Um, but uh, back in the day when we, you know, when storage was a premium, 
we cared about not uh, having repeated data. And also, uh, you know, if you've ever been at a, say, a company and you've moved and sort of half the company doesn't seem to know you've moved even two years later, then you know about these redundancy problems. So uh, Todd developed an idea that we'll study later called normalization. And this is a way to sort of look at examples of the data that is going to go into the database management system and sort of work through and and reduce the redundancy and uh, so to prevent, to ease storage and also prevent these uh, update anomaly issues. And this is the concept of normalization that we will be talking of later. Um, so when relational came along, then we start to get um, a number of systems, system R, Angra, and, and Peter Lee, and Oracle, and DB2, sort of, sort of known names in the database world are developing now on this relational uh, model. And that's it for this one. Thanks much for your attention.